Hello and welcome to another day of Advent of Code. We're back for day 20. Uh, so let's jump into it. Okay, so this problem is a uh, image transformation problem. Basically, the input is going to look like uh, one very, very long line, which represents all of the possible bit transformations. More on that in a second. Uh, one note, uh, the sample input in the actual problem has new lines in it. So if you are copying the sample input down, make sure to fix the first line so it's one long line. I did not notice that my input, so I had to fix it. Uh, and then there will be an image at the bottom. So there's bit transformations and an image. And uh, the image technically expands out infinitely, and so you can consider you know, every, every point around this to be not set as well. Uh, and for part one, uh, what you do is you uh, look at any given pixel and determine what it's going to be in the next round. And the way you do that is you look at the nine pixels around it and line those up in order to be a binary number. So in this case, it would be 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Uh, then you convert that number to decimal, index into this string here to figure out whether it is going to be a one set or a zero set in the next image. Pretty simple. The problem is fairly straightforward to that point. The problem is, and, and solving the sample input is, is really easy given that, the problem is the sample input uh, has no octothorpe in the first position and an octothorpe in the last position, which basically means uh, things that are unset will remain unset indefinitely. And um, things that are fully set will remain fully set. However, in the actual input of the problem, you'll notice that the first character is an octothorpe, which means that the outer regions outside the image are going to toggle in and out. Uh, well, this is an octothorpe and this is not an octothorpe. So that means they're gonna toggle in and out of being set, which makes the problem much, much more difficult. Um, <laughs> because the, you know, the, the inner part of the problem is very easy to solve, but everything edge and to infinity is difficult to solve. Um, so I had the sample part working absolutely fine, but had a lot of troubles with this. And I'm going to show you how mine worked. So uh, part one is to do two rounds of this, and part two is to do 50 rounds of this. Note that if you did an odd number of rounds, you would have an infinite number of points set for this input because everything would get set indefinitely. Uh, and obviously you can't represent that by actually having the real uh, coordinates in, in memory, so you have to consider that some way or another. All right, so let's take a look at my solution. Uh, my part one and part two are basically the same. Uh, and let's start with the parsing. Parsing is pretty straightforward. Uh, I basically take the first line, turn it into a dictionary. I could have left it as a string and then checked for the character and that, that would have worked as well. Uh, but I wanted it to just be easy ones and zeros here. So I basically parse the input as a default dict. So it defaults to zero, but sets to one for every octothorpe. Um, I have a special function which converts all of the inputs to uh, coordinate pairs based on uh, if there's a hash or not. So this was kind of a helpful built-in function for me, but uh, I ended up <laughs> I ended up dropping that data and moving it instead to a dictionary because I need to control both the set and the not set bits. And so I make a default dict. It defaults to zero, but has these values. And we'll actually see that this default to zero is what I'm gonna change later on in the problem to handle that infinite toggling um, on the outside. All right, so then for the actual problem, uh, I you know, do a loop for the number of times that I'm supposed to loop. I figure out the min and max coordinates that I need to handle based on what I've already recorded. That way it, it does expand a little bit each time, but it doesn't expand infinitely. Uh, and this is where I handled my special case with the uh, toggling. So I noticed, you know, if part zero is one and part 511 is zero, so the first the first character is an octothorpe and the last character is not, this is the infinite toggling case that we have to handle here. And I change how my default dict works in that case. So if I don't do any toggling, it's always gonna default to zero. I can always use this as the next steps uh, dictionary. But here I want to make it default to either one or zero based on whether we're on an even or an odd iteration. So for the, the first iteration, I want this to default to one for the next run. Uh, and then for the second iteration, I want it to default to zero for the next run. And so I do that by having a 
a default dict which has a special function. Now note here, and this is a little bit weird, I had to use functools.partial, and the reason for that is I'm using a lambda, and otherwise this lambda would access whatever the current value of i is. And I didn't want that, I wanted the i, I wanted the i specifically when this gets created. Uh, just to show that a little bit, if we have a list of lambdas for i in range 10, list.append lambda print i, uh, and if I call the last one, it should print nine because that's the last I. Uh, oop, we need to call it. Uh, and if we print the second to last one, it also prints nine. And that is because this just references the I here. We can actually see that better by using the disk module, which I did a video on. I will link that in the description. Uh, we are a little bit off topic, but I felt this was important to explain here. So this is the disassembly of any of the functions in this list. It is load global print, load global i, and then call function one, which is pass one argument into the function above it. So uh, it calls print with the global i, essentially. And so you'll notice if I uh, change the value of i, it's actually gonna change all these functions at the same time. Uh, so the way to fix this is to use either partial or a class that is callable or some way to capture the value at that time rather than doing a enclosure lookup here. Uh, and so that's that's what I did with functools.partial. So this binds uh, Q, the parameter Q to the value I and then I can do my little toggly math here. Uh, but beyond that, it's not too tricky. It's basically compute the integer for that coordinate, which I'll show you that function above, and set a one if it's set, set a zero if it's not set, and just you know, go through there. And at the end, sum up the number of ones you have in the values. Uh, and this is my integer function. Basically, <laughs> a little bit cheesy. Um, I actually don't need to call int here. Uh, the original code was Boolean, so I was converting them to integers, but uh, basically, I check each of the nine coordinates around me. Um, I could have done this with a loop, but it was, <laughs> I was going, I was trying to go fast, so this was easier than writing out the loop. Uh, but then I convert it to a string and then base to integerify it. I could have also done this with bit shift, um, but this worked fine as well. Uh, but anyway, that's basically my solution. And then for part two, I just changed two to a 50. Uh, it's pretty slow, but it should be, it should finish within a reasonable amount of time. Uh, mine, mine took, I think, like 10 seconds to complete, which is my slowest puzzle by far for this year, but uh, it's still, it still at least finishes. Anyway, this is day 20, and I'll see you around for the next day.